Hitler on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Grew. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from 7 to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Security alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. But the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. A popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at InfoWars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative. Destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out. Intellectually, it's begun and you can feel it. Again, thank you for joining us on this live worldwide radio slash TV transmission. I'm Alex Jones here in the TV studios. David Knight is hosting live in the radio studio. We're going to go back to him after the break. But something I want to start doing every week here on the show is take a look back at the almost 20 years of archives that InfoWars has at some of the biggest and most important stories that we've broken. And to see in hindsight how accurate they are today. And I want to look at one of the most viral videos we've ever put out. Four million views on YouTube, millions of views on other channels, uh, aired on TV networks all over the world to tens of millions. And that is Charlie Sheen's 20 Minutes with the President. You can say what you want about Charlie Sheen. I've known him since about 2005 as well as his family, Martin Sheen and others, they are really real people, truthful good people who care about justice and freedom. And Charlie's been through a lot and had his own share of problems. Who hasn't? But I just really admire his courage when he was threatened, when he was threatened with his job, you name it, uh, to go on me with C-SPAN and, and expose 9-11. And then two years later, in 2009, shoot the video that we are about to re-air 20 minutes with the president that was designed in Charlie's mind to try to get President Obama to look at the 20 questions that are asked over the 20 minutes that Charlie was asking for with the White House. And the White House did call him. He did get contacted by one of their head PR people. And they said President Obama 
obviously wouldn't do it. But at the core of that was Charlie's attempt to try to get a media debate going about the 20 questions. And the 20 questions, like six of the 10 commissioners saying it was a cover-up and a lie, Cy Hirsch saying pretty much it was an inside job, uh, hijackers' phones working at impossible altitudes, that was all condensed down into the 20 minutes, the 20 questions for the president uh, that really is, to this day, the best roadmap to do your own research and discover how much ridiculous evidence there is of 9-11 being an inside job. By criminal elements operating in our government, the Saudi government, and others, to be able to bring in a total police state and launch all these wars. And then after we air, re-air, 20 Minutes with the President with Charlie Sheen, the video I shot at his house, then we are going to come back, and I'm going to look in hindsight at some of the new news where our government and NATO, as well as Saudi Arabia and even Israel, are openly endorsing ISIS, which is publicly Al-Qaeda, to take over the whole Middle East and engage in just incredible crimes against Christians and others. I mean, this really proves everything that Charlie was talking about. So I admire Charlie for all his problems, for the fact that he's got so much courage. What he did in time will live on forever. His courage, knowing he'd be attacked. They keep people in Hollywood on a very short leash. You've heard about the thousands of conservatives and libertarians have to meet in secret because they'll be blackballed if they talk about the Second Amendment being good. Well, Charlie is one of the vanguard of getting out of the liberal conservative paradigm and just talking about truth and freedom. And so, from the archives, Charlie Sheen and his message to President Obama that dovetails with the 20 questions for the president. No warning signs that I'm aware of. And it was a revelation that the White House had no intention of making public. President Bush was told in August that Osama bin Laden might be planning an attack involving the hijacking. could have predicted. Nobody in our government, at least. The, uh, August 6th uh, PDP. I believe the title was bin Laden determined to attack inside the United States. 70% of family members' questions were never answered during the 9-11 commission report. Lee Hamilton answer. and Thomas Keene said they were set up to fail. I mean, I'm a member of the commission. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. The questions, Mr. President. The questions. Building 7 ablaze at the moment and apparently getting ready to collapse. Building 7. Free fall collapse. Well, no, there's number 7 coming down. The excitement and the fun that people get watching an old building being demolished and they wired very carefully for days and it's a very careful operation. Third time today. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by world-placed dynamite to knock it down. It's one of those things to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull and then we watched the building collapse. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. We are getting information now that one of the other buildings, Building 7, in the World Trade Center complex is on fire and has either collapsed or is collapsing. The Pentagon. Vanishing airplane. From my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. The only site uh, is the actual uh, site of the building that's crashed in. And as I said, the only pieces left uh, that you can see are, are small enough that you could pick up in your hand. Uh, there are no large uh, tail sections, wing sections, uh, a fuselage, nothing like that anywhere around, which would indicate that the entire plane crashed into the side of the Pentagon. Firefighters and police describing explosions. A lot of them. This is a secondary explosion. We've got numerous people covered with dust from the secondary explosion. Just floor by floor, it's sort of popping out. It was like, it was if, if they had detonated. Yeah, yeah, detonated. They were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. Looks sort of like the building just demolished. Even if there was no secondary explosives in the building. Kind of like gunfire. You know, bang, 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 bang. And then, and then all of a sudden, three big explosions. Do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me, it sounded like it. it to me, it sounded like an explosion. Chief Albert Turry told me that he tried to get his men out as quickly as he could, but he said that there was another explosion which took place, and then an hour after, there was another explosion in one of the towers here. Sabelle Edmonds, FBI translator, breaking her gag order.
all our intimate relationship with bin Laden and, and Taliban. We did carry very intimate relationship with these people all the way up to September 11. Bin Laden was spirited into this military hospital in Rawapendi for kidney dialysis treatment. The military had him surrounded. They were saying that Osama bin Laden had to be watched carefully and looked after. NORAD standing down. Where were the planes? Head on now to one of the eeriest moments amid the carnage of 9-11. A mysterious plane was seen flying right over the president's residence. The E-4Bs over New York and Washington, otherwise known as the doomsday planes. It has never been officially explained. Cell phones working at impossible altitudes. Solicitor General Ted Olson receiving phone calls that the FBI says were never made. What happened during that call? This is the only information we have on these terrorists. She was able to call him twice. How she could pull that off, we don't know, but she did. These are the questions, Mr. President. These are the questions. They go on and on. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I come to you today representing the families of the victims of September 11th, as well as millions of my fellow Americans. Hopefully by now you've had a chance to read my letter to you 20 minutes with the president and if not at least had its contents brought to your attention we have questions mr president lots of questions a lot of them are detailed in my letter but trust me there are hundreds more questions as my letter chronicles sir the 9-11 commission itself says they were lied to deceived and essentially prevented from carrying out a real investigation. The people of the United States and the world demand the truth, sir. We have to continuously ask questions. That's what a patriot does. That's what a true American does. We ask questions. You, sir, have the power as well as the responsibility to initiate a truly independent congressional investigation into the events of 9-11 as well as its aftermath. We want our country back, Mr. President. Therefore, I'm not just calling on you and your team. I'm calling on each and every American citizen to wake up, stand up, and demand the truth. We're counting on you, Mr. President. Be on the right side of history. An investigation must not interfere with the ongoing efforts. That's Charlie Sheen's message to the president that will live on forever as an example of courage in the incredible cowardice culture of Hollywood. I want to shift gears just to the fact that Al Qaeda out of Saudi Arabia, run by British intelligence, NATO and others, has been wreaking havoc all over the Middle East the last four years, taking over Libya and North Africa, trying to take over Syria, taking over uh, areas of Iraq, engaging in mass murder. And Benjamin Netanyahu, the leader of Israel, came out last week and said, we should support ISIS in an attack on Iran. I mean, this is incredible. And I'm not even anti-Israel. Folks know that. But I am anti-funding Al-Qaeda under a new name, ISIS. Give me a break. And that's why our own government isn't even backing the elected leader of Iraq. This is the most scandalous garbage I've ever seen. Look at how they staged Fast and Furious, shipping guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. That's a false flag staged terror. Self-inflicted wound. Look at how they're opening the borders up to flood us with... Millions of illegals pouring in to bankrupt the country and, and then hold a gun to our head saying grant amnesty and we'll stop. Look at how they've staged all these other events. This is what criminal elements in government do. I'm not saying Al-Qaeda isn't real. I'm not saying there aren't real Muslim extremists. I'm saying they work for the New World Order and their threat is being used to take our freedoms. The border's wide open, but they got highway checkpoints in the middle of the country and TSA checkpoints taking baby's diapers off, looking for Al-Qaeda, our own government runs. Here's McClatchy newspaper. 
Al-Qaeda-linked group, Syria rebels, once denied, now key to...